Let's talk about the equity markets because despite the fact that we're seeing what the best profit margins for corporations here in Japan in the last decade or so, you're still quite neutral on the Japanese equity markets. Why is that? Right. I think uh, several points. Well, first of all, don't forget there is still a big uncertainty about the global market. Uh, Trump's being elected. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been talking a lot about Japan, China. So there's always having a noise in this market right now, despite the fact is that I think relatively Japanese uh, companies are doing relatively okay. I think the earning expectation is getting higher next year, physical year. However, given the fact that we have so much uncertainty in the market, we just have to be a bit cautious about the Japanese equity market. Itself. Especially there seems to be uncertainty about the Japanese yen. I mean, even exactly. today, there is no clear direction of where the Japanese yen is headed. I mean, we're seeing these broad dollar gains, but when it comes to the the Japanese yen is pairing its losses right now. It's what at 113 spot 98. So what's your directional call for the yen and what does that mean for equity markets? Right. I think, right, generally speaking, yen should be a bit weaker than what it is right now. However, again, it has been always a noise as about Japanese yen. So we will say it is relatively sideways for the coming, mm. coming but like six months or so. And hopefully, hopefully it gets weaker because the correlation between weaker yen and <laughs> equity has always been high. So, When it comes to valuations of the stock market here in Japan, I mean, we are seeing investors getting more share buybacks, dividends. Mm -hmm. It's been a pretty positive uh, capital uh, policies from these corporations coming out of Japan. Is that something to look forward to? Definitely. Uh, what we've been just discussing in our conference right now is about stewardship code, um, corporate governance code. All these things are making clear about Japanese capitalism. And I think all these things, if you look at it from outside perspective, we're getting much more clear and, and transparent about our entire market and also about our uh, equity market. So I think people should be looking much more positive about how the Japanese companies and also investors are trying to make sure that we have been transparent than ever before. So this means basically a shift towards uh, valuation being the driver of returns, exactly. is that what you're saying? Exactly. I think there's going to be more valuational look than just simple defensive look. Mm. It, it, having said that, though, <laughs> given the uncertainties that you have pointed out in the beginning of this interview, is there a chance that we might see a rebound in those defensive names just because of the policy uncertainties all across the world? And we're talking not only in the United States, but also Europe. Actually, that's the thing probably we need to watch out for. And I think you're very true that as soon as the uh, market starts to be shaky, uh, not in Japan, but probably outside of Japan, I think that defensive play really plays out. At least when it comes to the real economy here in Japan, we are seeing inflation mm -hmm. starting to pick up. In your research notes, though, you say that you don't expect any meaningful wage increase in Japan. This is a huge problem with the Japanese economy, isn't it? I mean, uh, we are seeing more corporate profits, but not getting really translated into wages. So can this inflation pickup actually last? I think it's going to take a bit more time. I think wage increases happening in a certain sectors, like construction sectors, some of the service sectors. However, it hasn't been really widespread yet. But recently, we've seen some of the like um, companies are announcing that they need to probably increase what they're getting out from their services. So I think this is gradually creeping up, but probably not in a degree that people are really realizing yet. What does that mean for the economy then? I think for the economy, in a way it's good. In a way we're not expecting too high rapid you know, uh, inflation, which is good for the economy. I think you have to think about that way. And it's also good for the stock markets because that means the BOJ will continue to do what it's doing right now. Absolutely. Uh, when it comes to the BOJ, though, because inflation is picking up, I mean, they are struggling with soaring yields when they're actually trying to keep the 10-year uh, yield anchored at around zero. Does that mean that eventually they'll need to raise that target of around zero percent for the 10-year yield? I don't think so. I think, you know, after the Trump, you know, coming into the, um, the elect after the uh, presidency, I think, in a way, that situation helped out Japan. And I think the BOJ can be a bit more like wait and see mode. So for, for definitely for probably around six months or so, BOJ doesn't have to do anything. 
Now, when it comes to the government side, Prime Minister Abe may become Japan's longest-serving prime minister, an unprecedented third term. Does that mean that there's more momentum for him to actually accomplish the, the third era of reforms for Abenomics? I think that is absolutely true. And just uh, two days ago, uh, it was decided that he can go for nine years. That means he can go all the way up to 2021. Uh, as long as his health has been good. <laughs> so that means... <laughs> not really, like the first one. Uh, right? Not the like first one. So I think that is really important. Doesn't just, you just cannot forget the importance of the stability. Now, you see, in the past 10 years, we have seen so many changes in our prime minister, and that led to a lot of investors being uncertain about Japan. So this stability has been very important mm. for Japanese economy and also for stock market.